everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Australian Property Investment Podcast. I'm your host, Aaron Christie David, and I run a mortgage broker business called Atelier Wealth. We help property investors start out and scale up their portfolios. And on the journey, we're bringing people along that, that we feel that our clients find helpful. I personally have met a lot of our guests as well. So for me, kind of call that a filter, call that a way for us to find people that I call best in breed. And today's guest, I am very excited because I've had a look at the platform. I've gone through it. We've actually had a client when I've gone through their, their system and found that we've had a mutual client as well that has had great feedback. And I think that's really opened the door for this type of relationship where I'm like, there is so much value. There is so much benefit as well. And I'm talking about the platform called Hello House. And I've got the founder on Scott Agate to join us. G'day, Scott. How you doing? Yeah, really well. Thanks. Thanks for having me on. Matt, really appreciate your time. And before I jump into it and, and I start with the three Ps, uh, kind of laying a little bit of the foundation and having learned about you and your business, 28 years in the industry. So that, you know, spring chicken, I mean, you look like it on paper, it says a different story, you know, having owned three Bell franchises as well, which says a lot about, I guess, your business growth and sitting underneath that is decades of experience and particularly on the other side of the fence, which is the end. I won't say the enemy, but the, because a lot of potential home buyers, the friction point comes with dealing with the real estate agent, which I think it's going to be a big part of our discussion as well. If you're thinking, hey, look, is this more geared towards me buying my own home? Hello House, it do help enable you to build your property portfolio. But a cornerstone of people's in their property portfolio is actually owning their own home. And I think that's probably where the most emotion comes into it. That's probably where the most time consuming, effort consuming part of buying a property is. Investing, people look at numbers, they make a decision. Whereas buying with their home certainly has emotion attached to it because this is where you're going to try and put down roots as well. And the stakes get a little bit higher because we're talking probably about big old numbers as well. So Scott, I want to jump in and say, look, can you just share with us a bit about your three Ps, a bit about yourself personally, professionally, and your property journey as well, mate? Sure. Well, you touched on already that uh, I've been in the industry for 28 years or so. That was split up between five years as a residential agent in London and probably 15 years in Sydney. Together with my wife, we moved up to the Gold Coast and our two small kids about seven years ago. So we've been up here developing, flipping a few houses. And about five years ago, I founded Hello House, which is a nationwide performance-based negotiation service. So yeah, that's kind of my family background and my work experience. In that time, I would have done over 3,000 property deals, probably closer to three and a half thousand these days. So got a really good experience on all sides of the transaction, both as a you know real estate agent, as a developer, as a vendor, as a buyer. I've personally bought and sold 29 of my own properties. At that time, I've bought and done business overseas in London with property myself and in Japan where we've still got some property as well as obviously here in Sydney and the Gold Coast. So yeah, I feel like I've got a you know a wide variety of experience over those many years. I can add value to clients now. Yeah, some depth and breadth in that experience as well. I guess yeah. your negotiation is probably the biggest part and we'll, we'll, I guess we'll come to those when we're having, having a chat. But one of the taglines, which I think kind of jumped out at me when I was looking through was buy smarter, faster and for less. I'm like, that's the holy grail, isn't it? We're having properties. And I guess when we were talking, we look at one of the biggest pain points, not only for us as brokers, any any lender, and especially any client, when they're going for the pre-approval stage, it's now they're kind of, okay, good luck. You pre-approved and they're off into the wilderness. And it's like, come back when you find a property. And now we kind of, we go a step ahead personally, where we offer a home buying session, which is trying to uncover where are you looking? What are properties selling for versus what you're financially approved for as well? And have those goalposts come much, somewhat shifted. What are you seeing boots on the ground in terms of who are the ideal agents you should be talking to and why can't you engage them earlier? Know that if you know those pre-markets or those, I won't say off markets, but just before they come onto list, usually the VIPs get early access. Access, it's like, that's the unfair advantage. Just trying to stack the odds in your favor a little bit. I really want to understand from your perspective and kind of put yourself in the agent's shoes. I think first and foremost, what makes a buyer stand out to you? Consistency and it's showing up. And I refer to it as analogy of, of comparing it with going to the gym, but you know, you've got to be consistent with your gym workouts and you build, you know, that muscle memory over time. And it's just repetition and it's repetition as a buyer as well. So you're turning up and being seen at open for inspection. So you're physically there, you build rapport with them. You can have some sort of relationship with them face to face. So they know who you are. And then it's consistency of following up with feedback. And this is a crucial one that most buyers don't give any time to. The agent has to do their job. And for the agent to do their job, when they call you back on a Monday or post seeing a property, they need really good quality feedback. If you take the time to give them that energy, 
and to give them that honest feedback about what it was that was positive or negative for you, not only is that going to help them move you further towards your end goal of finding the right property or for them to help finding you that that home, but it allows them to do their job and they'll be very grateful for that as well. And you'll get better service out of that client as well. So repetition showing up, repetition on feedback and repetition staying top of mind so that you can create exactly what you just said, pre and off market opportunities, because up to 40% of listings in Australia sell off market. So the best buyers are getting to the front of the queue to not only knock out their buyer competition, so they're not competing against emotional end users on auction day, for example, or getting caught in that contract bidding race. And also you're seeing a wider variety of choice, which just gives you more options. Yes, but I think one thing you've said there is the feedback loop. And most, I guess, the misconception or the uh, the commonality here is play your cards close to your chest. Don't give anything away to the agent. Don't let them know how much you're proof or don't let them know that you, you'd like about the property because I'll play that angle, for example, as well. Whereas having personally me just sold one of our properties, I was like, give me, what's the feedback like? I want to know what buyer's feedback is. And I often found to your point around who was the party that was kind of there at the start, who's showing a little bit of interest. I'm backing them. Like I want them to buy the property because they're the ones that are expressing some interest. I'm not trying to gouge them. It's, we know what the market's going to sell. We know what that property's going to sell for. I want to find the right buyer and I want to give them this property that they've, they've fallen in love with. So how are you, I guess, at Hello House rewiring or retraining buyers to go, look, there is a different perspective and maybe you just got a blind spot here around how to engage an agent? That's a really good question. And it's something that I have to deal with on a daily basis. So I would deal with this at least five times a week. I did it twice yesterday with different customers of ours. Yeah. People are really hesitant to show their cards and exactly say what they're looking to spend. The problem is if you don't tell an agent the right number, all you're going to do is attract the wrong properties. So you're starting off with basically lying to the agent, which is just the worst way to start anyway. You're likely going to get lies back, which is the problem later on down the line. So if you're telling them that your budget's you know, $500,000, but you've really got 600,000, then they're going to send you $500,000 properties, which aren't going to be suitable. Vice versa, if you go high and your budget's lower than that, it's a waste of yours and their time. When it's a waste of their time, that relationship will end really quickly. So there's one really simple trick to get away with that. One is to be straight up honest, as we've said, and give them the right number. So if your budget is X, tell them what it's going to be at. But the trick is to change the conversation straight away when you have an interest in the property from budget to value. And that is the real insider's trick there. And it's very hard for buyers to, to get their head around how to do this. But the way that I might set up a conversation is to say, okay, great. Well, my client, I'll ring the agent and say, great, you know, Jenny and Peter are really interested in 12 Smith Street. Thanks very much for showing them through. We've come in at 480,000, blah, 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 with our offer. And they're like, oh yeah, but I know they've got 500,000. They've been telling us that for six weeks. Yep, they definitely have that. In fact, they've probably got 525 or 550. They just don't want to spend it on that house. They don't see value at that level. Here are the reasons why. Bang, bang, bang. It instantly gets rid of the elephant in the room. We never ever talk about what their budget is again and how much money they got. And then the conversation is all around value. And that's how they are going to, you know, purvey that offer to their client as well. So if you came and made it, if you had two different purchases trying to buy a property and one comes in and says, great, Mr. Agent, I'm going to give you 480000 because that's our max budget. We're going to give you every cent we've got. And this is what happens when you're an agent? This used to happen to me every day as an agent. Yeah. We're going to give you our max offer. That's here's our you know letter from the bank. That's the best that we can spend. And then buyer two comes along and says exactly what I just gave you the example of. You know we might have the money, but the value is not there. When they present that offer to the seller, what do you think the seller says? They say. Thanks very much, buyer number one, but you obviously don't have enough money to buy my home. And then buyer number two, it forces them into a conversation with the agent. Okay, well, they don't see value based on that sale, that sale, that sale. Where does, where does our property sit? What do we need to do to put ourselves in a position to sell? So it's a very different conversation. You're actually helping the agent do their job. I love it. This is the art of negotiation. And you've probably been to your fair share of real estate conferences and I've been, you know, I've been to a few and follow a few of the real estate agent commentators and trainers as well. The art of negotiation is just like next level. I mean, I've seen FBI negotiators come to real estate conferences and speak, right? I mean, we're dealing with trained professionals that understand how to negotiate. I'm not talking about manipulate or squeeze every single cent out of you and make you overpay for a property that you don't want to. But as, a, as an intermediate, as a middle person, they're trained in the art of negotiation. Now, if you're doing this once or twice, three times in your lifetime, the style of negotiation changes very, very quickly. I mean, we saw people that were buying properties in COVID sight unseen, going unconditional and paying well 
control over what you know what it was just to simply buy that property. Whereas we're in a very different style of negotiation now as well, which maybe in some markets could lean towards the buyer versus the seller. So this art of negotiation, how do you because that's effectively your secret source as a right. agent, as as Hello House. So how are you kind of imparting all that bottling that twenty eight years of experience to go to someone going, you can DIY, so you can do it, or you can do it with us, or we can do it for you. How does that negotiation feed into you? I guess, how you deliver for your clients as well, Scott? Well, I think we built a really unique business model because I sat there as an agent watching the rise of buyers agents in Australia and I didn't think it was a fantastic outcome for the purchaser who was spending a lot of money on someone that didn't necessarily have a lot of experience doing deals. And I've still got that same problem today is there's a rush of new people coming into the industry or buyers agents that are winning buyers agents of the year that have been there for two years or three years. They just don't have the level of experience in terms of the negotiation part of it. And where the value add for us in the day-to-day -day negotiation for me is unless you know what's coming next out of the agent's mouth or what the percentage chance of what you say is going to work at a particular point it's it's really a learned skill that has you know i've made lots of mistakes over 30 years and over those many thousands of property deals and it's not the, that's thousands of deals we've done there's thousands of deals we didn't do as well for whatever reason so it's just vast amounts of experience to put you in a position to know what to say and when and that's going to add the value to our purchases um i think the interesting thing though going back to what i said at the start here is the model that we designed was empowering Empowering people to go out and find their own property because 97% of Australians are already doing that and have been doing that for generations. So we feel that the buyers are capable if we give them tools and skill them up to go and find their own property. But where they get murdered is at the negotiation stage, right? Because that is that learned skill that takes tons and tons of practice. The average Australian buyer only buys every 10 or 12 years. You're not going to get that level of experience. The other problem is when you're competing against a skilled negotiator, it's very easy for me as the agent to say, congratulations, Aaron, you just won, you out negotiated the other party or whatever it is. When And you think you've had a win because I'm trained to make you feel like you've had a great experience, but you may have just overpaid by $150,000 and you're the only bidder. Yeah. So people think they're really good negotiators in Australia, but they just don't have that level of experience to understand. So we think empower them to find the property, give them those tools and skills, and then we can add that value in the negotiation stage. Uh, well said. So you talk about tools and skills. Let's just go there for a second, which is the Hello House platform. Having gone through it, our team looked through it as well, which I think is fantastic. How are you enabling people to go on this journey for you and what type of tools, resources, what can they expect as you know, jumping on the Hello House platform, mate? Yeah, well, we created a first of its kind buyer course last year called Get Buyer Ready. And that's broken up into 44 easy learning lessons that are around two to four minutes long. And it's based around the four principles of how to find, analyze, negotiate, and transact property in Australia. So it's a warts and all, nuts and bolts, you know, brain download from 30, 30 odd years in the industry. And it really shows people how they can use these simple tricks and tips along the way at no cost to give themselves skills to fast track their buying process without rushing, which is really important. It's not about going fast, but it's about moving with speed. You don't want to rush these things. So I think those simple tools like that, that we've been able to teach people will give them confidence to go out there and find their own property. I think it all starts with really being honest with yourself and starting with a shopping list that you know actually actually exists and that you you're going after property in a core area rather than a really wide net because a lot of advice that's that's out there is okay throw the net really wide and start looking and then kind of narrow that down but you, I go the opposite way and start with a really tight net and work your way out from there. And I give all the reasons in that course as to how to find property effectively and how to be honest with yourself about what is a must-have and what's a nice-to-have. And how do you make that distinction between must-haves versus nice-haves? Because I think some parts for people, especially if you've been doing, if you've been buying for a little bit, you go, these are my non-negotiables. And buying as a couple, you then have, and this is what I say, sometimes the buyer's agent becomes that real mediator because a couple, but one person says that this is what I really value and the other person says, I really value this. And you can't buy of two different blue prints mesh those together to make sure that we get these non-negotiables on a, on a page together versus these are the ones, things that maybe could negotiate and maybe people that's where they get caught up in the I don't like the color of the paint for example the flooring you know man, that's an easy fix versus we always go back to our non-negotiable so how do you and this maybe steps into that buyer's agency type that type of work that you do going how we engage on a granular level as well. Yeah, so we have a spreadsheet where people can basically pick and choose what they want. So we give them all the options available to them, but we drill it down to 
we like to have five must-haves and up to three nice-to-haves. And really you want to start for me is what are the most important things? Are you buying within a particular school zone? Do you need to be near a transport location, you know, like a train station or a bus stop or whatever it might be to get to work? Do you want to be near a lifestyle like a park, a beach, whatever it's going to be? So that's going to define the postcodes. And ideally it's one to two suburbs max. It depends where you are in Australia. Some suburbs are vast and there's not much turnover. It might be acreage. But typically speaking, it's one to two suburbs max. So you've got your two suburbs, then what are you buying? You're buying a house, a townhouse, a unit, whatever it might be. So there's a very distinct asset class. Then you're going to go to bedrooms and bathrooms. So if it's a four bedroom house that you absolutely need, but a five bedroom house is a nice to have, then it's a four bedroom house is what you're searching for. And in the nice to haves, you know, that's a bonus because it's just going to be bigger, right? And then you're going to have bathrooms and then you might have, you know, whatever's most important to you. Is it unrenovated, fully renovated, turnkey, brand new, whatever it is. That's kind of making up your five. Um, and you want to have budget as we've discussed as well. So you want to have a firm budget. Once you do that and you send that out to agents, you're going to, they're going to have a very specific view of what you're looking for, Aaron. So they'll know that when they go to a listing presentation or they're working their database during the week and they keep getting notifications from you that you're looking for this very specific style of home it's going to be top of mind for them because not other not many other buyers are actually going to that level of detail and aren't that consistent by doing it weekly without you know dropping the ball and you'll find that that creates opportunities and that's the right way to start the search we find if you watch that market for four to eight weeks and i advise people that they should be seeing up to 50 properties before they make a decision yeah. that's physically inspecting those properties as well then it's very hard to get ripped off because you know the prices people are paying in real time you know how long it takes to replicate that asset so if you miss an opportunity is it going to be four weeks to find another four bed in that postcode in that school zone or is it going to take three months? That's going to drive how hard you go when you're making an offer because there's that fear of loss. Okay, well, I know if I go too low here, I miss it, then it's going to take me months to find another one like it. The market might be moving up or down or whatever it might be. So yeah, get in, do a four to eight week hard session and uh, be really clear in, on, on your list. I love it. There's so many things in there that and I think that's probably why we've connected is there's so many things that you're saying that I feel like for our successful buyers, when I see them and what they you know, they talk about success leaving clues, this is what happens. So I'm like, be consistent, you know, updating the agents, for example, with that feedback. But also it's almost like a mini resume. This is the type of properties we're looking at. These are the particular styles or the streets that we're looking at, for example. So when they're talking to potential vendors where they're going to sell for, it's like, I've already got the perfect buyer in mind. Right. You know, That's you exactly know. what happens. Because you yeah. just like you've just stood out in in a cluttered sea, going, "We are the buyer." And so that level of consistency. Think about a resume. If you those those great resumes that come across our desk, you're like, "This is the right person," because it tick, it tick, and I don't have to. It's not a hard sell for me anymore. It's, got, it's a great level of engagement. And the other yep. one you mentioned there is hound the pavement, and it's amazing how many people get pre-approved. They're on a three month window, and then they've got to start the search from like this standing start versus some momentum in their search from like, "Have you been out to a few auctions, for example? Have you pounded the pavement?" Just to get a feel for like what's online versus what the actual property looks like in real life as well. Absolutely. And that's that's one of the biggest issues. Around searching. Yeah, keep going. Yeah, I was just going to say that's one of the biggest issues. Like clients will say to us, you know, I've got two properties to see this Saturday. I'm like, well, if you're truly watching Surrey Hills, for example, in Sydney, there is more than two properties that are open for inspection that are going to be close to what you're looking for. So if there's eight, C8, you know, because you want to meet those eight agents, you want to be active there and you want to see the difference between what it looks like in real life versus what it looks like in digital imagery that's been perfectly you know, manicured for marketing by the agent. And people are making buyer decisions based on what they see online. And it doesn't replace boots on the ground, as you just said, like you've actually physically got to do the work. But if you do that in a very short time frame, it's not actually that much of a drag. And then you just, you limit the chances of overpaying and overspending. You hit the nail right on the head. You said auctions. We advise all of our clients to watch every auction in real time because they can see the level of buyer depth. They can see where those buyers drop off in the pecking order and they can see where the vendor's expectations are on price. Yeah. Um, so that gives them an idea when they find another property that they might like, they've got an understanding of, well, hang on, there's no point lowballing here because I know there was four people that were underbidders on Saturday afternoon for a similar home. They're likely going to be interested in this house as well. So You'll need to make a quick decision. You'll have to have confidence around price and you'll need to offer you know, at a fair range. And we coach our clients. I, I've used a trick for many years that I offer 95 to 97% of the way towards where I believe market value sits. Mm. And it's a very specific reason why I do it. If you lowball and you make an offer, you're going to learn nothing. The likelihood is you'll be turned away. Okay. If you're turned away, you've then got to start bidding against yourself. So you're putting more and more money on the table. And the vendor just thinks, I'm more likely to say no, because every time I say no, they come back with more money. 
So you don't want to get caught in that game where you're bidding against yourself. You don't want to get caught in the game where you learn nothing from the offer in terms of where the vendor is motivated to sell. So work out where market value is and then offer 95 to 97% of the way. The reason I do that is the first offer goes very close to buying it and sometimes does buy it. And if you don't buy it with that first offer, you typically get a counter offer from the vendor and you know exactly where you need to be and you can make a decision whether or not you want to go that next step further. Yeah. It's a really clean way of bringing the offer process much faster, much more accurate and on your terms to control the negotiation. Yeah, exactly. And on your terms. So it's like, why don't you make that that first move and have the first mover advantage versus someone else making the offer? And now you're on the back foot to counter off. And that person that's always made that initial offer will be in that position of power as well. And the amount of times that clients are scared to make that initial offer, they get showing their hand. It's like, well, don't you want to be in that power of that position of power to negotiate rather than you're the second and you're counter offering and they're, they're going to come back to you versus be easy to do business with as well. Yeah. And a lot of people make buying decisions or value decisions based on what the agents are quoting or yeah. what the price is on it. Like I have a million stories, Aaron, of people saying to me, oh, it was on at 640 and I bought it for 580. Absolute steal. And I'm like, yeah, but what if it was worth 550? What do you mean? It was on at 620. Well, it's got no relevance to market value, what they put it on at or what the guide price was it has no relevance to market value. So if you're making all these buying decisions based on what agents are quoting or you know, where the fixed price is, you're going to have no idea of what market value is. So you need to really understand your the asset that you're buying, what they trade for, and see your history of it very recently to understand the buyer depth, what people are paying, and not, you know, ensure that you don't get ripped off. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think the, the, the real message that we're kind of hitting home is this is not a get pre-approved, find the one that you fall in love with, bang away you go. I mean, that's people that have that is generally the exception to the rule when or they overpaid. Yeah, correct, right? And I think what you mentioned there is seeing 50 properties that most people, they balk at that going, you have any Saturdays that is? That's, and then it's buyer fatigue and that's generally when they just go, look, pay, make this pain go away. I'm going to pay over just so I don't have to stop spending my Saturdays trawling through property and the emotional energy that comes with looking at properties midweek, going, getting contracts reviewed, speaking to a bank or a broker and trying to get your numbers redone. The emotional energy sometimes strains people's eye. I'm just going to pay whatever it takes to make this pain go away and a buyer's agent effectively becomes your insurance policy against overpaying quite often. But that's the issue that I had as an agent working with buyer's agents when I sat in that seat for years in Sydney was that the buyer's agent would come in and effectively pay whatever price they were told to pay because they had no motivation other than getting a deal across the line which got them paid. So I just saw this disconnect where the buyer's agents didn't care about value. They were just caring about getting a deal across the line and it was very easy to, to manipulate the numbers. So you know, that was the very reason that we set up a business. Well, okay, well, rather than working towards the 3% of people that want to pay for that service, we'll in, you know, encourage the 97% of Australians that are already doing this themselves okay. and then give them the skills and the tools so I can actually have an impact on the property market in Australia. And then when they get to that point of being able to negotiate, if they want help, they can outsource it to us and we'll close the deal for them. And it's performance driven. So it's you know, we're pegged to the result financially, which is the opposite of a buyer's agent. So that kept everybody honest. And I, I felt that was just a more transparent way to do, you know, property dealings in the country. But the cutting corner bit that you said is a big issue, right? That's what most buyers will do is they get lazy or they get buyer fatigue and they'll just cut corners and do it. But when we talk to buyers that come to us initially, they'll say, oh, well, I'm already doing this. I'm already speaking to agents and I'm already going to open for inspections. So, okay, great. You know, how many times, you know, how many um, touch points have you had with the agents? Oh, oh, you know, I sent an email once to them to say, this is what I'm looking for. Okay, once. Well, you know, as an agent, they might meet 200 people a day, you know, on a Saturday. So they've forgotten you already. It's irrelevant because lots of people send it once and never, ever do anything about it. They don't know how genuine that you are. They don't necessarily see you're open for inspections. So it's about showing up and being consistent more than once. And the other big one that we see is they say, oh yeah, well, I'm talking to agents. Okay, great. How many agents are you talking to? Oh, four or five, the four or five big ones in our my area. Okay, great. Let's look back at the last three months of transactions for the asset type and price point you want to buy. So if you want to buy a three bed house for 500 grand, in the last 12 weeks, how many agents sold those houses? Well, I wouldn't know, maybe six or seven. Okay, great. Well, let's go back and look at it. Typically it's like 40, you know, there's, in a competitive marketplace, everyone gets listings. It's shared, right? You might have your standout market leaders, but you know, within an office or within a team, sometimes there's 10 or 20 salespeople within you know, one office, right? And if you're not talking to all of them, you're just not getting around. So we go the other way and say, okay, great. Rather than spend, speak to four or five people, let's work out how many agents are active in your market. Okay, there's 110. Well, let's talk to 110 of them every week consistently with the same specific message and see what happens. And when we do that, we just get results really fast. Beautiful. I love it. And this is the side that as a single buyer, you're not privy to. You're not, you're not privy to seeing what happens. 
happens in the competitive side when it comes to buy. It's like you can only see tunnel vision on my negotiations with an agent. Yeah. You don't get to see what your competitors are doing and that your competitors actually got early access, that they've got off markets before they even came onto real estate or domain, for example. They've got preferential treatment because the buyer's agent maybe has great relationships in place already and they know that that agent too. So yeah, there's that unfair advantage that we talk about that I'm really glad you've kind of blown that open for us as well, Scott. Thank you very much. Nice. No props. Beautiful. Now, the Get Buyer Ready course, this is where I think we're going to have a lot of value for people that are listening and some of our clients as well. So do you want to take us through kind of what people can, I know you mentioned before, is, is a whole suite of things for about 42 videos or different topics that you guys cover, which is phenomenal. So can you talk about how people can jump on and get access to that as well, mate? Yeah, sure. So it's www.getbuyerready.com.au. And all of your audience and all of your customers have got a special code, which is AW. GBR for Get Buyer Ready, so AWGBR. So people go there, they'll go to that landing page where it's going to spell out with a few introduction videos exactly what the course does. And I think it's probably three-hour commitment and you can watch it in video or you can just do it in, in written form. But you, there's a lot of examples there. We've got, you know, different spreadsheets and downloads and things for each of those 44 courses. So people will get, you know, things like open for inspection checklists and how to set up your buyer shopping list and all those things as well. So we've really built it all out for people that it's a one-stop shop for them to get educated and be able to apply those skills as they learn them on the run. Beautiful. We've often said this and you'll hear this come up a lot in our podcast is the greatest investment people make is into their self-development and education. And three hours, that's, I don't know, two episodes of succession. I don't know what everyone's watching. <laughs> um, yeah. Think about it. How much are you spending on this property in Sydney? You're spending upwards of a million, sometimes $2 million for a lot of our yeah. clients. Three hours, what's your hourly rate to try and save a few hundred thousand dollars? I think that's a fair trade-off when it comes to time. And the course doesn't cost anything. Like, come on, let's right, let's reshape the way we're looking at this as well in terms of time and investment. And then the ability then to connect with one of your buyer's agents there, Scott, I think is a great time return on investment, mate. So I want to say thank you very much for for sure. No, that's okay. Well, they'll get a strategy session out of it as well. So if, if nothing else, they'll get a really good inside running from us to coach them on what they need to do next to get the, you know, to get the most out of that course. And I agree with you, education, you know, education is key to it. We always say the same thing that educated buyers make better buyers. So we're on a mission to educate as many people as we can. How good's that, mate? Thank you very much. Really appreciate your time. What's up? You guys are doing it. Hello, house, mate. So look forward to getting you on in the future and seeing how things are progressing for you guys as well. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Cheers. Awesome. Appreciate it. That's a wrap for another episode of the Australian Property Investment Podcast. We will include all the details for the Get Buyer Ready course and Hello House if you do want to connect with the team there as well. Include our, our, our access code for you to check out. And as always, if you found this helpful, please feel free to leave us a review or even better, drop us a question that you want answered in the future. Until next time, take care. Beautiful. Mate, thank you very much. We'll get this all organized, get this across in the next couple of weeks, and we'll rock and roll from there, Scott. Nice one. Thanks, mate. That was a good chat. I hope you got what you needed. Mate, heaps. Thank you very much. Awesome. My pleasure. Have a good day. Mm -hmm.